airports. If you've been lucky enough to travel internationally or ever been on a plane, you've most likely passed through an airport at least once in your life. And boy, are they an experience. Now I first need to mention, if you have a flight book super early in the morning, like 4, 5 a.m., everything is glorious. Sure, you have to wake up early and all, but you have that brimming excitement that it's the day of the trip. Peacefully driving through the night, dark, empty roads, you've reached the airport, it's basically empty, and you're through and waiting for your plane in no time. It's seamless. Wow. Perfect. But if like most people, you've booked a flight in the height of the summer months, at the weekend, peak travel time, you may have just signed yourself up to hell on earth. So you've bought your tickets for your big summer getaway. You've done all the prep. You've gone out and bought yet another pair of shorts as part of your holiday clothes shopping, even though you've got four perfectly fine pairs at home from previous years. You've somehow managed to wrangle all your clothes into your suitcase and you've finally made it to the airport. So when you step through those revolving glass doors, the first thing you have to do is, of course, check in. That dreaded moment when you look across all the airline check-in desks. Most of them are pretty bare. And yours is rammed. Now, if you've already checked in online and you're just traveling with a singular backpack as hand luggage, lucky you, you smart ass. But if you have a suitcase like the majority of us, get in line, buddy. Snake queues everywhere. I mean, I mentioned these little buggers in the conventions in a nutshell video and quite literally said this, the snake queue. We've all experienced one at some point in our lives, reminiscent of any airport. It's the classic back and forth queue design. Very space efficient. It's just a part of the experience, stuck behind so many people. Families, elderly people, families of elderly people. But when you do eventually make it to the front of the queue and you now resemble the pensioners that were in front of you, you hand over your passport and that moment we all know too well. Where the employee behind the desk kind of holds your passport photo up to your face to check the resemblance. Now what do you do? in this scenario. If you're anything like me, your passport photo was taken seven years ago and frankly, looks nothing like you. So I kind of stand there and try and subtly make myself look as much like the photo as possible, changing my expression, moving my hair around a little bit, like that would make any difference. Well, once you've passed the resemblance test, that was merely the beginning. Next is the suitcase weighing. So different airlines offer different maximum suitcase weights. So I guess the plane doesn't get too heavy and I don't know, fall to bits. And even though I know I've used one of those weird gravity scale things at home before I left, and I know for a fact my suitcase is way under the maximum weight, whenever I drop that suitcase on the conveyor, I feel the hot sweats coming on. Like a middle-aged woman going through the menopause. I mean, nobody wants to be that guy whose suitcase is way over the maximum weight. Then you're forced to either pay the price of a Boeing 737 to add some extra weight, or humiliate yourself by sitting on the floor and removing items from your case, hoping you've just gone under the max weight. And also, so, what is with those signs on the check-in desk that list the items that you can't have in your suitcase? Now, this would be fine, but they always say no firearms or explosives. What is the point of that? Just a list of the most obvious things to not pack in your suitcase. Oh, silly me. Let me just remove this RPG from my suitcase that I didn't realize I couldn't bring with me. Well, when your case is hopefully under the weight requirement and your firearms are put aside, you stand and watch as your suitcase disappears through that little flap into the abyss as you salute it. And you just have to trust them that it gets on the plane. That suitcase could be heading anywhere for all I know. And can I just add, thank God, for e-tickets, because if you still had to print your booking confirmation physically, it would be lost within five minutes. So you finally conquered the check-in desk, the queues, the passport check, the bag weight. You've got your boarding pass. Don't lose it. But trust me, that is nothing, because next, the most dreaded part, security. Now, despite the name, as I approach, I am feeling anything but secure. You take one step in the room, guards everywhere with sniffer dogs. And in the UK, they carry guns. Not the sniffer dogs, the guards. And unlike you US viewers, it's not every day us English folk see a, how do you say, firearm. I mean, the only time I see these things is in video games. There's even more snake cues, machines making random noises. Before you even get close to the action, it's already pretty intimidating. And if that's not scary enough, security is far from simple. There are so many steps and rules. So when I finally get called up, the first obstacle, the trays before the metal detectors. So it's hand luggage in one tray, but electricals have to go separate. Then it's liquids of 100 mil in another place, in a plastic bag, empty your pockets, sign here, chunk of hair here, swab your mouth here. It's all so overwhelming. Then you're rushing because there's 700 people behind you. And I don't even know where I stand on the clothing situation in security anymore. A few years ago, your shoes had to come off. Now they don't, but your belt 
has to go in. And sometimes your jackets do, but sometimes they don't. And hoodies do, but coats don't. I honestly have no clue. To be honest, I just strip fully naked to be on the safe side. So as all your prized possessions sail away in tiny grey trays, it's finally time to step up to the metal detectors. All these bad boys are designed to make the strongest willed man break down. Now I'm trying to be dramatic here, but it's been a hard fight. Now it doesn't matter if I've gotten rid of every trace of metal on me, removed fillings, taken out hip replacements, have zero drugs on me, not even a packet of polos. When I step through those things, they will always go off. These things aren't metal detectors, they are me detectors. You walk in, make that stupid pose, and then without fail, beep, beep, beep. Everybody looks at you like you're some sort of dangerous criminal. Over to this side, please, sir, where you then frankly get violated. Now, just to get serious for a second, fun fact about me, I actually have an orthopedic heel in my right shoe under my foot because I have a lifelong condition called being a loser. But no, I have sadly been cursed with a condition called scoliosis. So whilst your spine looks like this, mine looks like this. Thankfully, it doesn't impact my life too much and most people wouldn't even realize I have it by looking at me, but it does mean I pretty much have to constantly wear a little chunk of rubber tucked under my right heel to straighten me out and stop any pain. Well, airport staff seem to love it. Without fail, it is taken off me and put through a special drug detection machine for closer inspection. Like I'm Pablo Escobar smuggling a wad of Colombian snow in my sweat-soaked orthopathetic heel. And even though I know, of course, I have no drugs, I panic and start to look so guilty that I actually start to convince myself that I am smuggling drugs. And let's just be honest for a second here. In a universe where I was a drug smuggler, why would I humiliate myself by putting drugs in an orthopedic heel? That's not cool at all. I'd put them somewhere way cooler, like up my bum or something. And you know what I said earlier about putting liquids in a clear bag? Make sure that you have checked everything. Because if you leave anything over 100 mil on its own or any aerosols, your bag will be separated and swabbed. Then you really do look guilty. You'll get pulled into a side room and interrogated because you've left half a Capricorn on its own without a plastic bag. Well, once you've made it through the detectors, dodged an international drug trafficking list and reobtained all your possessions, if security is hell, the next area is a heavenly place. Duty free. So simply put, duty free is just a store area of the airport that sells things with no VAT. So every Thing is way cheaper. And you'll know when you've made it to duty free because the air reeks of a weird mix of all the popular fragrances rolled into one in some weird expensive stink cloud. What I imagine Jeremy Fragrance's apartment smells like. Oh, people don't know that I'm not wearing underwear. Male models' faces all over the walls with fragrances you've never even heard of. But who cares? Because everything is so cheap. Sunglasses, sun cream, aftershave, neck pillows, M&Ms. Weirdly everywhere for some reason. You can buy a three litre bottle of Jack Daniels for about five pounds. Duty free is truly the alcoholic's paradise. Stock up, buy gifts for friends and family. And then you have every English bloke rushing to buy ciggies in bulk to sell to their mates down the pub to make a cheeky profit like their Alan Sugar, if Alan Sugar promoted lung cancer. So once you make it out of duty free, you are a free man. The rest of the airport is yours to peruse. There's even more shops to explore, but don't be fooled. Whilst duty free is cheap, not everywhere in the airport is too. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The obligatory airport Burger King can be double the price. So stay vigilant, travelers. And some of the stores in airports are so weird. I don't know about you guys, but when I pack for a holiday, I already have all my clothes prepared in my suitcase before I come to the airport. I mean, sure, the odd hat or a pair of glasses but why is there a JD selling a full Nike Tech Fleece tracksuit in the airport? I mean, I know it's England and all, but come on. I'm not just going to whack that baby on whilst I'm walking around the beach in the 30 degree heat in the Costa del Sol. And a Rolex store. Sure, I know all these designer stores have slightly reduced prices and all, but come on. You have to be a different level of wealthy to just casually buy a Rolex before you fly. So amongst relaxing and doing some shopping, your only next big challenge is your gate number. You'll have to wait ages for it to appear on one of the many various screens. These screens will be your best friend until you board the plane. Now this wait can be pretty boring, so sit around, eat some food, have a drink, and why not sit and look at some of the planes taking off and landing? Hey, you might even see the one that you're gonna be on. Funny story about this actually. So when I flew to Amsterdam a few years ago for TwitchCon, I knew it would only be around a 45 minute long flight. So as I sat down near a 
window and waited for my plane to roll in, I was met with horror as I realised it was one of those dinky propeller planes. I mean, I'm a pretty nervous flyer already, and it doesn't help when you see them pumping up the tiny rubber tyres and using their iPhone flashlights to check the underside of the wing, and the propellers that rattled as they spun. I mean, to be completely honest with you, after everything I'd seen, I didn't even think the plane would make it off the runway, never mind making it to Amsterdam. The flight was of course all okay. I mean, I did get a little bit nervous and repeatedly chant, I'm going to die to myself over and over again when I saw the propellers bending as they spun, until I looked to my left and realised a little girl had overheard me and she burst into tears. And Flybe, the airline that I flew with, no longer exists. But anyway, eventually, your gate number will appear. Usually it's when you're in the toilet or one moment where you're not looking at the screen, and of course, it's the furthest gate away. So you trek halfway across the airport, racing the people on the walking conveyors. And of course, the distance to your gate can vary depending on the size of the airport you're in. Yet again, Amsterdam's airport, Schiphol. Fellas, I pray you never, ever experience that airport. Being the fourth busiest in Europe, it is gigantic. It is far too big. I mean, there were screens telling you how long the walk to your gate would be, with some of the times being over 25 minutes just to walk there. In Schiphol, you need to take a flight to get to your flight. A truly hellish experience. They do have a cool clock though. Wow, look at that. There's a little man trapped in there. Working on a weekend like usual. Working on a weekend like usual. Anyway, you finally finish your mammoth expedition and make it to your gate. You sit down, let out a sigh of relief as your legs throb. You can finally relax as you take a glimpse over at the screen and realize the gate has moved. It happens every single time. And just a tip, if you are ever in a French speaking country and your flight has a delay, never read the word out loud. So when you eventually make it to the right gate, if you can still stand, you hop in the queue and everyone starts boarding. First, the people in the fast twat queue, then the other commoners. So you slowly edge towards the front. Don't worry, you've got this. Nothing else can go wrong now. You hand the kind worker your passport, they scan it, hand it back to you, give you a big smile and they say, enjoy your flight. While you then reply, you too. To. Oh, you idiot. Why did you say that? She is not getting on the plane with you. You fool as you relive the moment as you walk down the air bridge. But who cares? Congratulations. You've conquered the airport. Go forth, young Padawan. Get on your plane. Sit down and revel in the experience of three screaming babies, someone ripping a fart, no leg room, uncomfy chairs, and mediocre food for four hours. And isn't it funny that there's no Wi-Fi on board, but the card reader that charges you £10 for a small tube of Pringles works just fine. But remember, you may have made it through one airport, but there is always a second on the other side. It's like the airport you came from in your home country, but on hard difficulty. It's usually much hotter, and you don't understand a word anyone is saying. The guards are usually bigger, scarier, and sterner. But thankfully, arrivals is much easier than departing. There's just one last step before you can enjoy your vacation. The baggage collection. The conveyor of death. You sit and wait and wait and wait. It seems that everyone else's suitcase comes out before yours. And even though you paid extra for your case to go on first, all that means is that on the other end, it comes out last. But eventually, you see it. Your suitcase. It's emerged from the darkness. It survived the abyss. It slowly moves ever closer to you. You reach out your hand and miss it so it has to go around again. But then, you grab it. Finally, you are a free man. Go and enjoy your vacation. You deserve it. Then you look at your watch and realise it's 10 minutes until your flight home because a week has passed whilst you're waiting for your case. Sure, airports are a pain. They're hectic. They're stressful. They're tiresome. But you know what? Sometimes they're nostalgic. The airport can be the host of that energetic pre-vacation excitement, knowing you're travelling to a new and exciting place that you've never been. And I always recommend travelling with friends. It makes it all so much more fun. Sometimes the travel there can be just as enjoyable. Cracking jokes and laughing as you make memories on the trip of a lifetime. Having that early morning coffee or that late night £65 Burger King. Sure, airports are a bit of a challenge, but once you're living it up in the sun, climbing a mountain or seeing the wonders of the world, it makes it all worth it. Except Except for Shippel. And with all of that said, wait, Dave, what are you doing here? This is kind of, you know, my line. Mate, did you not watch the last video? I'm doing Ed Reads from now on. You've missed a lot. I met a bloke in an alleyway and he gave me this device on my wrist that lets me time travel and I added a teleportation module and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm here to tell the audience about Sailey, the eSIM app by NordVPN. All right, all right, fine. What are you doing here anyway? Oh, me? I'm off to Benidorm, mate. What about you? Oh, me? I'm a, uh, I'm heading to the desert. I have. Um, unfinished business, shall we say. Long story. Anyway, here, fine, fine, take over. Thank you, thank you. 
So, if you guys are anything like me, you like to travel to the pub, to the footy, and of course, to places like Benidorm, Magaluf, Ibiza, Kavos, Bradford, Skegness, and of course, Transylvania. We all hate the pain of being on holiday and having to run around to find a speck of decent Wi-Fi to look at the footy results, or paying an arm and a leg for a tiny bit of data. It's all such a pain. Well, that's where Saley comes in. You just download the app, choose any plan from 160 countries across eight regions, download the eSIM, and you're ready to go. No hassle, and you're connected. With all that time you've saved, you can get immersed in the local culture. Yeah, hello, mate. Uh... Uno Biro Por Favore. There you go, that's some Spanish for you. The best thing about Sale is it removes any need for a physical SIM card. So not only can you skip the airport queues, but you can dodge any chance of pesky scammers overcharging you. Sale reduces, or in some cases, completely eliminates roaming fees. There's 24 7 support if you need some help. It's compatible on iOS and Android devices, and if your device isn't eSIM compatible, you can request a full refund. And you only have to download an eSIM once, so you don't have to keep downloading multiple eSIMs for different countries. Sale truly makes travelling and connected to the internet, well, you do so way easier. And it's a must have if you travel a lot. Or if you just like the odd trip abroad, like me. A Sailor eSIM will ensure you always have connection. Also, if you set up your eSIM prior to your trip, it'll activate the second you land in your destination. And lucky for you fellas, you can get an exclusive 15% off discount on Sailor data plans by using the coupon code Giuseppe on screen now or at checkout or using the link on screen or in description to download the Sailor app to your device. Now, if you don't mind me, I'm off to Benidorm. Back to you, Joe. Oh, oh, he's not here. Wait, shall I say the line? With all of that said, goodbye.